Wow, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour that you're watching this episode or where you're watching us from. Uh, my name is Ben Fetcher and uh, this is Beholding Christ Show here on Wema TV. And I'm, I'm here again to talk about eternal life. And man, this is one of the things that excites me like no man's business. I'm so excited about eternal life because this is the core reason, the main reason, the main thing why Christ came. He came that we may have life. John 10.10 10 says, uh, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance. So uh, together with everything that Christ came to do, the main thing and the most important thing is that we may have life, eternal life. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. So this is the main reason why God gave Christ to us. Shall we pray as we begin our session? Father, we are so delighted this hour. Thank you for your love. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for Christ in us. Thank you for the coming of Christ, that the coming of Christ has become the game changer. My God, we thank you that we live in the realities of Christ and we are blessed. Thank you. How I pray that as, as we share the word of God, the revelation knowledge will flow freely, unhindered, and our lives will be transformed by your word as our minds are being renewed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen wherever you are. Amen and amen. So in our last episode, we talked about eternal life and we spent much of the time uh, defining what death means and what is the meaning of eternal death and eternal uh, uh, what is the meaning of physical death and spiritual death and uh, how we were dead in sin and trespasses and how uh, Adam caused uh, spiritual death because of his sins. And we say that a spiritual death means to be separated from God. And we say that physical death also does not mean ceasing to exist. It means being separated, the soul from the body. The body being separated from the soul or the soul being separated from this, from the body, whichever way you choose to put it. And we say that we should not worry and we should not be saddened by the people or the relatives, our relatives or friends who died physically because we know they did not stop existing. They are existing. And for those who had Christ in them, they will live forever with God, in union with God. And I remember we also say that eternal life does not mean living forever. It means living forever in union with God. Praise God. Because we say it, everyone that is in the world will live forever, whether they are born again or not born again. Those who are not born again, they will live forever separated from God. And that, was, that is what we called eternal death. Living forever separated from God. Those who have Christ in them, they will live forever in union with God. Because eternal life, we say it, the Greek word for eternal life is the word zoe. Zoe. And zoe, <coughs> defining zoe, zoe means the life of God. Praise God. And now, uh, I remember we stopped at John 17 verse 3. And we will pick it up from there. John 17 verse 3. And verse 3 was our main verse, says, and this is life eternal. This is what we call the Lord's Prayer. This is Christ praying for you and I. And he says, this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That is the King James. And this is <clears throat> life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And we say that, I, I remember the last statement was, eternal life is a knowledge. Now, I want us to look at that word. That verse again says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So, eternal life <clears throat> is knowing God. I know someone may be disappointed by that definition of eternal life. Eternal life is knowing God. But now, the word knowing there, again, like I was explaining the word zoe, <clears throat> the word zoe is one word in Greek. But when it comes to English, it's, 
eternal life, it has two words, but it loses the, the real meaning because when you say eternal or everlasting life, looks like just living forever. But the, the seriousness of eternal life is not in the forever living. It is in the quality. It is not in the quantity of life. It is in the quality of life. And you get to understand what I'm saying uh, in a minute. Now, the word knowing there, it's a very important word for us to understand what to talk about. And uh, this is the same word that is used in the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, uh, the Bible says, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. Listen attentively. The same knowledge, the same word know that is used in John 17 verse 3 where he says that they may know God, that the only true God and Jesus Christ. This, that same word know is the same word know that is used in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 where the Bible says Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. So the same word knowledge is the same word knowledge used in uh, in John 17 verse 3 and here he's talking about Adam knew his wife so it's a sense of intimacy it's a sense of intimate relationship it is a sense of oneness it is a sense of union praise God so when I say eternal life is knowing God this is what I mean eternal life is coming into intimacy with God it's coming into union with God Notice, I'm not saying coming into you, uh, it's not about being united with God. No, those are two different things. Like we have Manchester United. That's a team who come together, a group, uh, uh, a group of men who come together for a certain purpose. And when that purpose is accomplished, they part their ways. Praise God. But now when we talk about union, it's different from united. Are you getting me? It's, defined, uh, it's very different from united. So he says, this knowledge that is used here is the same knowledge that it's used that is used in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 when he talks about Adam and Eve coming together having intimacy actually the real word there is intercourse having intercourse having intimacy such that Eve conceived so that is the same word that is used in John 17 verse 3 that they may know that they may have intimacy that they may have a oneness Praise God. Hallelujah. That they may have a oneness with God. Ah, awesome. So, this knowledge here is not just about intellectual knowledge. It's not saying that I know God. Like, when I look into the mountains, I get to know God. When I see the creation, I know God. That is not intellectual knowledge that is used here. It is a higher knowledge. Praise God. It's a higher knowledge which comes, which gets, uh, which gets two people into oneness. Praise God. Where then the object of knowledge and the knower becomes one. Hallelujah. What you know and you that is knowing becomes one. The, the, that is the, the, the exact knowledge the union kind of knowledge. So Adam did not just know Eve intellectually. It was an intimate personal experience with her. Praise God. So this was talking about knowing between a man and a woman in the most intimate way possible. So likewise, when Jesus said eternal life was knowing God, he was speaking about having an intimate, close, personal relationship with God. Wow, that is great. That is awesome. So when the Bible says... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have a oneness, have a union, have an intimacy with God. Praise God. That is beyond living forever. That is a quantity of life. In, that, in other words, what he's saying is you become a share, a, a, a shareholder. You become a partaker. The same life that is in God, you become part of the same life. Hallelujah. He says he has raised us up together and he has made us sit together in the heavenly places where we have become partakers. Hallelujah. We have become one with God. So eternal life is becoming one with God. Praise God. So this is uh, uh, this go, this goes beyond just thinking about forgiveness of sins. It goes beyond be thinking about being delivered and all that. It is beyond that. This is receiving the very life 
of God. Hallelujah. So uh, we saw in John 3.16 that God loved the world so much he gave his only begotten son that whoever should be, uh, believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if all you've done is to believe Jesus just for forgiveness of sins, you are missing the bigger part. The bigger part was not to forgive you your sins. The bigger part is that you may have life and have it in abundance. I know someone now may be saying that, well, Ben, thank you, you're talking about eternal life, but that is something that we'll get in the future. That is a promise for the future. And no one is sure whether they'll get eternal life. So let me say this. If you don't have eternal life right now, then you'll not have it. It begins here. Praise God. It is not a promise for the future. It is a present day reality. And I want us to go to the book of John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Yes, we we'll read from the New King James Version. So eternal life is not a thing of the future because eternal life, we've said, is an intimacy or intimate relationship with God. John chapter 5, I'll read from verse 24. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me, he has eternal life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life verse 25 most assuredly i say to you the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the son of god and those who hear will live verse 26 my my point of emphasis in chap is in verse 24 and verse 26 of chapter 5 the book is John. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted or he has given the Son to have life in himself. So he says in verse 24, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life, has everlasting life. So who qualifies to have eternal life? He who hears and believes. Many people think like it's those who act or who act accordingly. It's those who behave right. It's those who are good in their, in their ways of life. No, that is not the qualifier to have everlasting life. The qualifier to have everlasting life is believing. Believing in Christ. Praise God. Believing in Christ. The moment you believe in Christ, you receive the life of God. You, re you receive Zoe, Z-O-E, the life of God. The life as God has it. He says, for as Father has life in himself, the Father has life in himself, so he has granted or he has given the Son to have life in himself. So this is the kind of life that we are talking about. It's not the quantity, it's the quality. What is the quality of this life? The life of God. Hallelujah. And now there is something else that he says in uh, verse 24. That uh, he has everlasting life or he has eternal life. Then the next thing is that shall not come into judgment. So everyone who has life shall not come into judgment. Many people are waiting for the day of judgment so that God will, desire or, or will decide whether he will give them eternal life or not. I know many people are waiting for the day of judgment so that they can know whether they belong to receive eternal life or not. But he says, these people who have believed, they already have eternal life. So in the day of judgment, they shall not come into judgment. They, are, they will not be judged. I know you've heard of stories like how we, we were scared when you were in Sunday school about a certain uh, day when God will put up a very big screen in heaven. Whether in heaven or on earth, I don't know. But they say, they used to scare us and tell us, God will put a big screen to show the whole world how, how your life has been. And uh, when everyone watches, you just cry and cry and cry and wishing you are better than that. And everyone will be laughing at you and you'll be ashamed of yourself, even of the things that you did in secret because God will expose you, because God will show the world how evil you are. My goodness, that is not God. There is, not, there is nothing like that. It is not even in the Bible. There is nothing like a screen to show the world of how sinful you are. My goodness, that is, those are lies. They are not there. They are not there. Show me in the scriptures. They are not there. So 
What about eternal life? This is what we are talking about, that when you received Christ, you receive eternal life. So what will happen in the day of judgment? In the day of judgment, those who have eternal life, they will not be judged. Why? He says, they will not come to judgment. They will not come to judgment into judgment because they have passed from death to life. The people who will go through judgment are those people who are in death. Remember, we are not talking about physical death here. We're talking about spiritual death. They are separated from God. But for you, because you have passed from death to life, you belong to God. You belong to Christ. You have the life of God. You cannot fear judgment. And you know, when you understand the meaning of eternal life, you realize that every kind of fear in your life disappears. There are so many people who are in bondage, especially when people talk about the coming of Christ. When people speak of things about eschatology, even the word itself is scary eschatology people are scared they don't know whether they are not even sure whether god will come for them whether they go to hell whether they go to heaven whether they will be tormented forever people are not sure but there is a possibility for you to be assured of your salvation how by understanding eternal life because eternal life is not a thing of the future it is a present day reality it is the life of god life as god has it and this is the life that makes god eternal you know god does not live in the realm of time god does not live in the realm of monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday and sunday god does not live in the realm of january february to december he does not live in the realm of 20 uh, 2000 2021 2022 2023 no he is beyond that he is eternal the bible says that he is the he, he is the alpha and the omega so before you get 2022 or 2025 he is there he is eternal praise god and when we talk about an eternal being it means that he is above time because it is god who created time it is god who created time because uh, he existed before time so where was he before he created time that is the same place where he is above time and beyond time praise be to god and now when you receive christ in you you receive his very life the life that is beyond praise god so this will cause you not to worry you not you cannot worry about judgment you cannot worry about a screen you know, a screen that you are told by some people who didn't even read the Bible correctly. So they have they have been misinformed and now they are trying to scare everyone with mis misguided information. There is no such a screen. So you should not fear. Why? Because when you believe in Christ, when you have Christ in you, it is settled. It is settled in your heart that you have eternal life. And eternal life means eternal life. It means eternal then life. So something that is eternal cannot be lost. Something that is eternal is not temporal. You know, people think like eh, it is possible to lose eternal life. You know, receiving salvation is receiving eternal life. So salvation and eternal life is the same thing. When you received Christ, you received eternal life. So you received salvation, which is eternal life. So people say you can lose your salvation. How? You cannot lose it. It is not your working. It is not you who saved yourself. It is God who saved you. The seriousness of salvation, the seriousness of eternal life is not in the, in the, in the receiver of eternal life. The seriousness of salvation is not in the one being saved the seriousness of salvation is in the savior praise god how well how well do you know your savior do you know him he says that he is able to save to the utmost praise god he says that he gives eternal life praise god i don't know how you can explain like uh, god had given me eternal life but now i have lost eternal life so if it was eternal how could you lose it Seriously, you cannot lose it if it was eternal. Because when you received Christ, you received eternal life. So you cannot lose it because it is eternal unless it was temporal. Because some people think God gives us, uh, saves us until our next sin. So the moment you sin again, you are cooked. God deletes your name. That is why we keep rededicating our lives. God, write my name in the book of life. Then you sin, you make a mistake. You think like God has deleted my name. God is not busy doing such things. That is, that is, I don't know what you, you think, God, who you think God is. Otherwise, there are some people here, like I know my, my kingsmen, my Kikuyu men would, uh, would get a very good business to supply rubbers and pencils to God, to be rubbing and 
writing and deleting, <laughs> you know. But God is not doing that activity. He saved us and he saved us with his blood. And the Bible says that the blood that was shed obtained eternal redemption. It obtained eternal life for us. So we cannot worry about it. Why? Because we are assured that Christ has saved us eternally. Now he says, the, 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 the other part of chapter 5 verse 24, he says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has, notice the word has, he has everlasting life. Mm, when I was in school, I was taught grammar. And uh, sometimes it's good to, uh, to get into grammar when, when you are reading the Bible. Because there is something we call tenses. You know, the coming of Christ was to change the tenses from what God will do to what God has done. So when Christ came, he changed the tenses from I will to I have. Look at what he says here. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. I want you to underline the word has. He has. He has what? He has eternal life. Oh my goodness. Everyone who believes in Christ has eternal life. I can dwell there for the rest of my time. He has. He has. It is not he will. He's, he does not say whoever has eternal life will. Uh, whoever whoever has, uh, has believed in me will have eternal life. He says he has. Now it's a present day reality. It has been accomplished. Before the cross, it was a promise. After the cross, it is a, it is a fulfilled promise. I always say, uh, the Bible says in Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 that no matter how many promises there are, they have found their yes, that is to say, their fulfillment where? In Christ. And therefore we bring our amen. That, that is why we are called believers. Believing what? Believing that he has done it. Hallelujah. So he says he has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. So a believer, every believer, everyone who is in Christ, everyone who is the son of God, you have received the life of God. You have been made one with God. You are in union with God. So you should not fear judgment. If you have to fear judgment, then it means even God is fearing judgment because he has given you his very nature. Eternal life means the nature of God. Zoe means the DNA of God. Because you have the DNA of God, you should not fear judgment. And now I understand why John, Apostle John in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, he says, in this, uh, love is made perfect in this, that even in the day of judgment, even in the day of judgment, the day of judgment, we have nothing to fear. He says we have boldness. Even in the day of judgment, we'll have boldness. Why? Because as he is, so are we. Child of God, you should not fear this thing about the second coming of Christ, the judgment day, the, the judgment seat of Christ. You should not fear that. Why? Because you have passed from death to life. Praise God. You are of God. You are on the side of God. You have been moved from the courtroom. Mm. You have been moved from the courtroom where judgment is ongoing and you have been brought into the family Ah, where you are a son. You are not in the courtroom awaiting judgment. You are in the family and you have arrived in the presence of God because you have been given his very own DNA. Hallelujah. He says, but has passed from death into life. Then verse 26 of John 5, 26 says, for as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life. So where is this life? It is in the son who is Christ Jesus. Now, turn with me to the book of First John. We are still talking about eternal life and it's just getting sweeter. First John, uh, First John chapter 5. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I have eternal life. I am of God. I cannot fear judgment. I have boldness even in the day of judgment because as he is, so am I in this world. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5 from verse 10, again from the New King James Version, he says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Verse 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So what is the testimony of a believer? 
The testimony of a believer is that God has given us what? Eternal life. It is good to testify that you 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 have a new car. It is good to testify that you uh, you bought a new piece of land. It is good to testify that you you are having a new shoe. It is good to testify that you have you have a, a a new house. But this is our testimony above every other thing. The testimony of believer is that we have eternal life. Let me take it up again. And this is the testimony. This is verse 11 of First John chapter 5. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. What happened to you when you believed? You received Christ in your life. And the Bible says that this life is in Christ. And where is Christ? He is in you. So where is eternal life? Eternal life is not in heaven. Eternal life is not a promise for the future. Eternal life is in you. And actually, even you. You have been raised with Christ. And where are you? You are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Your problem is that you look at yourself and you look at this body. I say this body is not you. This is not you. The real you, the spirit you, has the life of God. That is why you live forever. And the quality of life that you have inside you. Then verse 12, he says, He who has the son, do you have the son? Yes, I have the son in me. Has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. So these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God, that you may know, that you may know. Again, this word know is used in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, that you may know that you have what? Eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So he's writing to who? These things I have written to you who believe. Believe in the name of the Son of God. So if you are the one who believe, he's speaking to you. And right now I'm speaking to you. And what am I telling you? That you have eternal life because eternal life is in the Son. And because you have the Son, you have this kind of life. And we have said that this kind of life is what is the life as God has it. The very DNA of God. The very nature of God. It's not the quality, it's not the quantity, but the quality that makes it, uh, that makes it even more real. The quality of life as God has it. That is why when you believed, you received a new DNA. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 that... You are a chosen generation. Generation. From that generation, we get the word gene. Gene means DNA. You have the DNA of God. You have the very gene, the very nature of God. That is what you have inside you. So when you got born again, God raised you and transferred you from the, the genes of your ancestors, your grandfathers, your grandmothers. You, are, you know, name them. You, you know them all. And he brought you spiritually into his own genealogy. So your genealogy is Christ because of eternal life. Your genealogy is Christ. That is why I say if you are in Christ, generational curses cannot find you there. Because you are not in, the, in your ancestral generation. You are a chosen generation. What is allowed to happen to you is that which is of God because you have the gene of God. Right now, if there is anything in your life that is not in line with the gene of God, that is not in line with the life of God, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. Maybe you have a sickness in your body that you inherited from your ancestral generation. You inherited from your grandmother, grandfather, or whoever you may you may name it. They told you that it is a family thing. No, it is not a family thing. Why? Because you don't belong to that family. You belong to the family of God and you have received the nature of God. Eternal life is in you. Therefore, right now, whatever that sickness could be, it is defeated by the life of God that is inside you. And you have to declare these things because things of God are experienced when we speak them. I declare that life to manifest in every area of you are being in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever they told you that you inherited from the uh, your past family, I am here to write it off and to, to delete it now. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has deleted it and he has ushered you into his own life. Wow, this is amazing. We can talk about eternal life 
for eternity because it is eternal anyway. Uh, but because of time, I want us to stop at that point. We'll take it up from there next time. And I know you are blessed because you are in Christ Jesus. So live with this mentality and identity that I am of God and I have eternal life in me. Mm. I have the life of God in me. Yeah, I have Zoe in me. Uh -huh. I have the DNA of God in me. So what cannot defeat God cannot defeat me. What cannot get God cannot get me. And with that understanding, you live a life above every situation and above every circumstance. No matter what happens around you, inside you is the glory of Christ. Wow, this is amazing. Thank you for being with me. This has been Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetcher and I'm excited and I call you blessed because in Christ you are eternally blessed.